Thank you. Before we start our business today, I just wanted to make a few personal remarks about Tom McCabe. As you're aware, Tom passed away on Sunday. Tom McCabe had a unique place within this Parliament. He was our first elected MSP, and he was the Parliament's first ever Minister for Parliamentary Business. Tom was a good, decent man, and like others from the first session, has left us far too early. I know members will join with me in expressing their deep sorrow to his wife Shuming and to all his family. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 12973 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting a revision to today's business programme. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I, thank you. Um, no member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 12973 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question 1, Alison Johnson. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what response it has received to its letter to the UK Government regarding the rescue of migrants attempting to enter Europe across the Mediterranean. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, Presiding Officer, the tragic deaths of migrants in the Mediterranean is sadly not just a, a recent experience. Uh, I have persistently raised the deaths of migrants in the Mediterranean since 2013. I raised this issue at the GMC Europe on the 31st of October 2014 and my letters of the 3rd of November to David Lillington, Minister for Europe, and 20th January to James Brokenshire, Minister for Security and Immigration, both highlighted that abandoning search and rescue is wrong in humanitarian and practical terms and that the current policy has clearly failed. A rethink in both immediate and strategic terms is essential. The UK Government response to my letter of the 3rd of November 2014 focuses on the traffickers, not the victims, as did the Home Secretary's statement on Monday. The agreed 10-point plan from the European Foreign Ministers is more hopeful and the agreed summit to be held on Thursday a positive development. Humanitarian issues are cross-border and pan-European. Together, the EU must prevent the Mediterranean from becoming a watery grave for so many fleeing conflict, fear and hate. Alison Johnson. Thank you. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's strong stance on this issue. Poisonous, damaging rhetoric on immigration has allowed governments to create a policy where thousands of people drown at sea. The UK government believes a search and rescue operation is a pull factor, ignoring the push factor, the persecution, the conflict and the war that causes so many people to leave home and family behind, to embark on truly terrifying journeys without any guarantee of safe arrival, let alone a warm welcome. Does the Scottish Government unequivocally reject the concept that drowning people will stop others from making the crossing? I, I agree very much with that last sentiment because uh, that was the argument that was being used continuously, that somehow this would avert people from travelling. Quite clearly, that policy has failed. But there's an important point about where we are now and how we go forward. Uh, not only does the EU have to take collective responsibility, which they are starting to do for the issue, instead of leaving the Italians um, to deal with this issue on their own, uh, but one of the concerns is because the UK is not a member of Frontex, uh, th because they're not part of Schreng Schengen, um, they have... Uh, not direct involvement in this exercise, so therefore all they've provided at the request um, of Operation Triton is two debriefing officers in 2014 and furthermore this uh, coming year. So therefore the rethink has to not just be a rethink on approach to immigration and the value of human life in a dangerous context where not just, not just adults but children here are drowning in the Mediterranean and they haven't just been drowning in recent years. There's an estimated 10,000 people have died in the Mediterranean over recent decades. So yes, Yes, we want strategic thinking, but the most important point and the, uh, I think the argument that we should be putting forward to David Cameron and the other EU leaders, they must take a humanitarian approach first and foremost, as well as dealing with some of the strategic issues that we all need to address. Ms Johnson. Um, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware too that merchant ships are preventing an even worse crisis, that they've rescued approximately 40,000 people in 2014 alone, and everyone expects this number to increase. Uh, does the government support amnesty and others' calls for more safe and legal routes to Europe for people fleeing persecution and conflict? And as the minister noted, 
Frontex is beyond the control of the European Parliament. Does the government support more parliamentary accountability for that agency? Uh, I, I would encourage uh, parliamentary and indeed uh, not just at European level but also domestically scrutiny of this issue. Um, I think there's a, a real concern that so much of the emphasis from the Home Secretary in her statement and indeed if you look at the 10-point plan is focusing um, on the uh, traffickers and smugglers whereas if you look at the experience of the migrants most of them have paid for transportation and go on to claim asylum in, in, in Europe. So I think the general approach has to be scrutinised further uh, but in her point about the kind of the idea of uh, better management across Mediterranean for merchant shipping and legal routes I think that has to be addressed but uh, the key issue here is uh, where are these people fleeing from? Many are from Syria, many are from Libya, um, and the overall response of Europe, and in particular from our perspective, the UK, in relation to Syria, has to be addressed, because this is not a problem that is going to be easily resolved. But in the meantime, we must renew the humanitarian efforts. Christina McKelvey. Yeah, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, Cabinet Secretary, 1,400 1, souls perished since the beginning of this year. We're 101 days into 2015 and we have lost 1,400 men, women and children. Not just migrants, not just traffic people, human beings. And I believe the EU and the UK have an abdication of responsibility and a dereliction of duty when it comes to these people. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she can provide an assurance to all of us today that she will lobby the next UK Government to reverse the Coalition's refusal to support planned search and rescue of these souls who have perished? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I appreciate the Member's point and um, uh, Chris McKelvey is the convener of the European External Affairs Committee and she uh, was at the session where the Italian ambassador um, set out concerns that the Italians had and their pleas for more cooperation um, across Europe. But her point about treating people as individuals and the humanity of this uh, most definitely has to be stressed. And however critical I've been of the previous government in their approach to this issue, let's take this opportunity that provides, uh, is provided by the summit uh, on Thursday, uh, a summit to think differently, to act differently, and uh, with the encouragement of all parties, I'm sure we can uh, ensure that any incoming government at the UK level will approach this in a different manner and take a different approach. And I'm sure if they did so, they would get support from across the chamber. Claire Baker. Um, President officer, I'm sure that everyone in the chamber was horrified to see the reports over the weekend and the tragedies in the Mediterranean. Um, these were mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, and there were people who were attempting to find a better future for themselves and escape the terrors of their own home country and the dangers that that was bringing them. Um, as both the member and the Cabinet Secretary rightly highlight, the tactic of cancelling the search and rescue operations last year has failed with horrendous consequences. Um, as the Cabinet Secretary said, these are um, complex problems. They will require not just the EU but also the international community to work together and will include the need for humanitarian assistance. Can I ask um, the Cabinet Secretary if the Scottish Government is what contributions they are making um, and providing to the area at this point in time? Um, in my correspondence to the UK Government in November and in January, we indicated that the Scottish Government stands ready. We've also said to the UK Government in terms of Syrian refugees that we also think we can play our part in, in what is required in terms of cooperation in that area. Um, so we will continue to make that offer. Uh, one of the concerns, and I think this is why the UK is in a different position than the rest of the EU, but should not be allowed to abdicate responsibility, is its non-membership of Frontex should not prevent it from providing that assistance. And similarly, in terms of our reference within the powers of this Parliament, we stand ready to provide our support. Roderick Campbell. Um, Cabinet Secretary, when the Italian ambassador gave evidence to the European Committee in October last year, he called for work with countries of origin through the Rabat process, for example, to coordinate and uh, aid better and create economic opportunities and jobs in the, those countries to discourage people from leaving their homes to look for a better future. What can the Scottish Government do to assist in this approach? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I referred uh, previously to the Italian Ambassador's um, evidence to the Committee of this Parliament in which he addressed the, the wider and complex uh, issues. Uh, it needs a multi pronged uh, response, of which I must stress again, humanitarian response within the seas of the Mediterranean out with the current borders of Operation Trident must be part and parcel. But also in terms of strategic efforts, we should also be looking at the uh, displacement of millions of people within the sources of the origins um, 
uh, from which the, the original countries from which these migrants are travelling and to provide support there for rehabilitation and uh, uh, you know, uh, compassionate treatment of, from terms of refugees but also in dealing with the areas of origin. So the suggestions uh, made by the Italians initially, they have stood by this on their own. Operation Mary Nostrum uh, was finished in November, replaced by uh, an operation that has clearly failed. But we must stand by our Italian friends and colleagues. They should not bear the burden of this themselves. And in terms of the proposals by the Italian ambassador, it's something that I would encourage EU leaders to look at. Question number two, Richard Simpson. To ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing to NHS staff to deal with stress. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Our staff are at the heart of our NHS. Their health and well-being is something the government takes very seriously. The staff government standard for NHS Scotland commits all boards to providing a continuously improving and safe working environment, promoting the health and well-being of staff, patients and the wider community. The standard is subject to a framework of local and national monitoring to ensure measures are in place to achieve and maintain these objectives. Richard Simpson. The Minister for that <clears throat> reply. Uh, she will be aware of the uh, concerns around staff using drugs and alcohol, which has actually always been a problem, but may be increasing. Um, and I know this as an experience as a clinician, that this can sometimes be as a result of stress, resorting inappropriately to drugs and alcohol. And uh, will she, is she also aware of the figures in the, the latest staff survey, which showed that a quarter of nurses agreed that they did not have the time Sorry, a quarter of the nurses agreed that they did have enough time to do their jobs. In other words, 75% didn't feel they had enough time. 50% felt they were too busy to provide an appropriate level of care. And 64% felt they were under too much pressure. So can I ask her specifically what individual support is offered to nurses to try and manage stress that they are inevitably going to face uh, whatever resources are provided? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, firstly, can I, can I say to Richard Simpson that, yes, uh, I am aware of the, the issues he raises. Obviously, the, the staff survey uh, is always, uh, shows a mixed picture of some areas, improving others, showing there's more to be done. The issue of, of drugs and alcohol is uh, an issue uh, for, for many uh, people in, in Scotland, working in many professionals. And we have to make sure that where the issue is identified, uh, in the, the workplace uh, that the right support is there to uh, support staff in whatever job uh, that they are working in. In terms of uh, the, the general uh, position of support, I mean, I'm sure Richard Simpson is aware that the Partnership Information Network Managing Health at Work is one of a range of HR policies that's agreed nationally uh, in partnership between uh, the NHS employers, the trade unions and ourselves and the Scottish Government. And it covers a full range of occupational health matters, including work-related stress and staff well-being. What we expect boards locally to do is to, to set out how they'll meet or exceed uh, that uh, national PIN policy. And that will include making sure that support is there, uh, whether it's for nurses or any other uh, professionals within the NHS, uh, to support them in whatever issues they are dealing with. Um, and I'm certainly happy to write to Richard Simpson with more detail of that, particularly on the drug and alcohol issue, if you'd find that helpful. Mr Simpson. Can I thank the Minister for her reply and, and, and say that I, I agree with almost everything that she's said. Uh, my, my one concern, I wonder if she'd agree, is that we actually need to be thinking more proactively uh, about individual nurses and how we advise them. Once they get to occupational health, their stress has been recognised, they may have been off sick uh, with that stress. But I just wonder whether we can't, in fact, get Health Improvement Scotland to uh, examine this in a bit more detail and look at uh, how we can actually support individuals before they get to the point where the stress actually requires them to, to go to occupational stress, uh, occupational health. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I, would, I would agree with Richard Simpson that I think uh, early intervention is, and indeed prevention, and there's been a lot of work, not just in the NHS, but other workplaces as well, to look at putting in place a range of prevention uh, measures to make sure that we have good mental health in the workplace. But he's right in that we, we should try to make sure that uh, interventions and support are there at the earliest stages of issues being raised and identified rather than just waiting until it's, it becomes an occupational health matter. I'm very happy to look at his suggestion around whether it's his or any uh, other uh, support within 
uh, of some of the organisations we have within the NHS that could perhaps look at more early intervention uh, support. That's something I'm very happy to take away and to get back to Richard Simpson about. Annette Mill. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the recent news that Bremen Medical Group practice in Bucksburn and Aberdeen will close at the end of September due to the number of GPs retiring or leaving and an inability to re recruit replacements. Would, would she agree with me that this example is symptomatic of the crisis regarding GP recruitment and retention as an ever-increasing workload combined with reduced resources has led to many GPs to retire early or go to work abroad because of the stresses affecting their working lives? And will she continue to work closely with the Royal College of GPs and the BMA to find an urgent resolution of this problem, which could well come to affect patients in many parts of Scotland? Could I say to Nanette Milne that I am aware of, of that particular local issue um, being uh, well cited on it, but can I say to her that uh, we have already been working with uh, GPs, through, with the BMA and with the, the Scottish uh, General uh, Practitioners uh, Committee around, for example, the redesign of the contract in order to sustain and support general practice for the future. We've negotiated changes to the current contract, which reduce the GP workload associated with bureaucracy, for example, and that's a, a direction the redesigned contract will continue to take. Um, on the general point, uh, we have seen uh, an increase in the, the number of GPs, uh, uh, six, almost 7 per cent increase in the number of, of GPs. Uh, we do have more GPs per head of the population in Scotland than in England, and we have invested in GP services by uh, almost £70 million. However, there's more to be done, and I'm very keen that we look at the, the opportunities for the new Scottish-only contract that will come in in 2017, and obviously we want to begin uh, those discussions uh, soon. We've I've already had some very productive discussions with uh, the, the BMA and the, the Royal College and others uh, around what we can do to make general practice more attractive. There are uh, issues around uh, young doctors not choosing general practice for a variety of reasons. Uh, we need to overcome that and we need to look at how we, we change that uh, to get more uh, young doctors choosing general practice. So I'm very keen to do that, very happy to discuss with Nanette Mill and others how uh, we can take that forward, hopefully on a cross-party basis. Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on the Bonamy Review.